What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today we're going to going to be going through uh, Deuteronomy chapter three, Hallelujah, and Deuteronomy one through three are just is just a recap of uh, the Israelites' journeys um, from when they came out of Egypt to where they ended up before they crossed the Jordan and took over Jericho. And so that the last chapter ended with the Israelites. Um, destroying part of the Amorites, uh, Sihon, and we're going to pick up in this chapter when they went went uh, further north to destroy Og and that part of the Amorites. And we see right here, they in the last chapter, they destroyed the, the Amorites in, in this area, and then they went up into Bashan and uh, destroyed Og and the rest of up there. But before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. This first death is just the body. Second death is body and soul if you're not given eternal life. God requ requires perfection in, in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. And none of us are perfect. We can't earn that. We can't earn the right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human faced temptation just like us but lived a perfect life and although he was perfect didn't deserve any punishment the death that he died was for us the death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins he died for us on the cross so that through him that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life through him our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out his righteousness repent and believe the gospel the word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind to truly turn to God to give your life to him if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins, ask him to save you, forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit gives you wisdom, power, many things. If you truly believe and you truly turn to him, and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. And uh, let's go ahead and get into Deuteronomy 3. Hallelujah. Then we turned and went up the road to Bashan, and Og, king of Bashan, with all his people came out to meet us in battle at Edri. But Yahuwah said to me, Do not fear him. For I have delivered him and his people and his land into your hand. And you shall do to him just as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon. So Yahuwah our God delivered Og also, king of Bashan, with all his people into our hand. And we smote them until there was no survivor left. We captured all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we did not take from them. Sixty cities, all the region of Argob. The region, or the kingdom of Og and Bashan. All these cities, or all these were cities fortified with high, with high walls, the 60 cities. Fortified with high walls, gates, and bars. Besides a great many unwalled towns. We utterly destroyed them. As we did to Sihon, king of Heshbon. Utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. But the animals and the spoil, the spoil of the cities we took, took as our booty, or our spoil. And so they killed all, all humans. And actually, let me rephrase that because they weren't, I don't believe these were fully human. And I believe this is a, a reason for destroying men, women, and children. To just completely destroy them. These were, I believe they were, uh, they had Nephilim blood. They were not fully human. And... There's, there's an interesting scripture here in Amos chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height, or though his height was like the, the height of the, his height was like the height of cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. And we see that Og 
king of Bashan was a giant. And it says here in a second, it says, For only all king of Bashan was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. But I believe the people as well were... Uh, maybe they weren't fully ex exactly... Maybe they weren't all giants, but I believe they were part Nephilim. Um, and Satan was trying to corrupt the DNA of mankind. And um, in order to not have the Messiah be born, uh, and not have a, I mean, just, I mean, just cor corrupt the DNA in general. So that there won't be pure humans left. Um, but also, you know, to corrupt uh, the bloodline of the Israelites eventually. And God, uh, I believe this is a, a major reason why God said to, why they had to destroy all, all, li all life besides animals. Thus we took the land at that time from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, from the valley of Arnon to Mount Hermon. Sidonians call Hermon Sirion, and the Amorites call it Sinar. All the cities of the plateau is, and all Gilead as far as Bashan, as far as Salica, Edri, the cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan. For only Og king of Bashan was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. Behold, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. It is in Rabbah of the sons of Ammon. Its length was nine cubits and its width four cubits by ordinary cubits. So four cubits would be six feet wide. And if I'm if I just calculated that right, and thirteen and a half feet long. So we took possession of, of this land. At that time, from Arawer, which is in the which is by the valley of Arnon, and half the hill country of Gilead, and its cities, or half the hill country of Gilead and its cities, I gave to the Reubenites and to the Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half tribe of Manasseh. All the region of the Argob, concerning all Bashan, it is called the land of the Rephaim. Jer. Son of Manasseh took all the region of the Argob as far as the border of the Gesherites and the Machathites, and called it, that is, Bashan, after his own name, havoth Jer, as it is to this day. To Maker, I gave Gilead, which is the other son of Manasseh. To the Reubenites and the, to the Gadites, I gave from Gilead, even as far as the valley of the Arnon, the middle of the valley, as a border, and as far as the river Jabbok, the border of the sons of Ammon, and we're going to look at this on the map here in a second, uh, at least uh, where their territory was. And we've been through this before. The Arabah also, with the Jordan as a border, with, the Chiner with from Chinnereth, even as far as the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, at the foot of the slopes of Pisgah, on the east. And so... Again, at... If we look at this map, the area of Bashan, this was given to the half-tribe of Manasseh, and the other half-tribe of Manasseh was on the other side of the Jordan River. And then down here, as we're going to see here in a second, was uh, Reuben and Gad. Let me pull that up. As we see right here, the area of Bashan, Og, that was given to Manasseh, and his son's maker, and uh, the other one that was just Jair, um, it split up the land of a Bashanir. And then Gad and Reuben had the area that they took from Sihon, uh, the, the rest of the area they took from the Amorites. So Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, and then the other tribes camped, set up, uh, took over their territory on the other side, and uh, this is modern-day land of Israel, this right here is modern-day Jordan, 
And uh, we're going to read again here in a minute how how Reuben and Gad left their women and children and, and the livestock on this side of the Jordan, but then they agreed to go over before, so in front of uh, the rest of their brothers to take over this land with them so they can settle in their territories. So we're going to read through that here in a second. Then I commanded you at that time, saying, Yahuwah your God has given you this land to possess it. All you valiant men shall cross over armed, armed before your brothers, the sons of Israel. But your wives and your little ones and your livestock, I know that you have much, much livestock, shall remain in your cities which I have given you, until Yahuwah gives, you rest, gives rest to your fellow countrymen as to you. And they also possess the land which Yahuwah your God will give them beyond the Jordan. Then you may return every man to his possession, which I have given you. I commanded Joshua at the time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that Yahuwah your God has done to these two kings. So Yahuwah shall do, which would be Og and Sihon. So Yahuwah shall do, do to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross, all the Canaanite, all the Canaanites. Do not fear them, for Yahuwah your God is the one fighting for you. Hallelujah. I also pleaded with Yahuwah at that time, saying, O Lord God, Lord uh, Yah, technically, O Master Yahuwah, Lord Yahuwah, you have begun to show your servant great kindness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such mighty such works and mighty acts as yours. Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country, and Lebanon. But Yahuwah was angry with me on your account, and would not listen to me. And Yahuwah said to me, Enough, speak, speak to me no more on this matter. Because he had already said uh, that Moses wasn't going to be able to enter the promised land because of his disobedience of not uh, not speaking to the rock to bring forth water the second time that they brought forth water from the rock but striking it again but Yahuwah was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me and Yahuwah said to me enough speak to me no more on this matter no more of this matter go up to the top of Pisgah and lift up your eyes to the west and to the north and to the south and to the east and see it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But charge Joshua, and encourage him, and strengthen him, for he shall go across at the head of this people. And he will give them as an inheritance the land which you will see. So we remained in the valley opposite Beth Peor, um, which was this area this area right here on the east side of the Jordan. The Jordan River is right here. And Jericho is right on the other side there. Right on the other side of the Jordan. And we're going to see that in the book of Joshua. When um, when they cross over the Jordan and take over Jericho. And so... Moses wasn't able to take them into the promised land. Just in, as in the same way that we can't be saved by keeping the law and but Joshua he was the one to take them into the promised land and which is the kingdom of God ultimately and Joshua that's uh he has the same name as Jesus Joshua's name was I believe was Yahushua and that's uh you know it's just uh, another type and shadow a beautiful type and shadow of a foreshadow of Jesus through Jesus being the one to take us into the promised land we can't uh, we can't earn it it's not Moses and the law that can take us into the promised land although we do obey the law it's very important to obey the law that's God's commandments his, his ways but we can't be saved by that we can't enter the promised land we can't enter the king kingdom of God through keeping God's commandments we need Yahushua, Yeshua, uh, Yahusha, uh, Yahshua, whatever his 
his true name is Jesus to bring us into the promised land to bring us into the kingdom of God hallelujah and that's the end of Deuteronomy 3 and 4 we're going to pick up with uh, the law uh, more going to God's, some more of God's commandments but the first three chapters were uh, just a recap of the journeys of Israel hallelujah brothers and sisters let's stay strong in faith let's endure to the end no matter what let's walk in all the ways of God let's serve him with all our heart let's be prepared for the return of the Lord let's make sure we're ready let's make sure we're right with God doing his will and everything and let's shine his light we do that through obedience let's shine his light let's show his love in everything we do let's be humble let's be blameless let's stay in prayer stay focused on him and on his word and let's support one another and love one another let's do his will in all things and if you don't have a relationship with Jesus turn to him give your life to Jesus Christ he loves you he died on the cross for your sins in order to offer you eternal life he took on the penalty for your sin and through faith in him and the sacrifice that he made we can enter the promised land we can enter the kingdom of God and dwell with God in his kingdom forever repent and believe the gospel give your life to Jesus today that's the end of Deuteronomy 3 thank you guys for tuning in love y'all shalom